There was a moment in history when mathematics hit a wall. A simple question, how to untangle a web of equations, had no answer. Not a reliable one, not a universal one. Even the greatest minds could solve small cases, but the larger the system, the faster it collapsed into chaos. Until one man, working far from Europe's grand academies, dared to impose order where none existed. He discovered a way to solve any linear system, to turn confusion into a sequence, a procedure, a mechanism that always worked. This is the story of Gabriel Kramer, the man who made the impossible solvable. At the dawn of the 18th century, in a small but fiercely intellectual republic nestled beside the still waters of Lake Geneva, a quiet revolution in thought was taking shape. Geneva was a city of contradictions, deeply religious yet relentlessly rational, politically tense yet culturally ambitious. It was a place where scholars debated philosophy over candlelight, where scientific ideas crossed borders faster than armies, and where knowledge was treated not merely as a pursuit, but as a civic duty. It is here on July 31st, 1704, that a child named Gabriel Kramer enters the world into a household where education is as natural as breathing. His family, well respected and comfortably placed, cultivates a home where books are plentiful, curiosity is encouraged, and intellectual ambition is never frowned upon. To be a Kramer was to inherit not wealth, but a tradition of thinking. From the earliest years, young Gabriel moves through Geneva's demanding schools, institutions steeped in classical rigor where students wrestle with ancient languages, geometric proofs, and philosophical arguments. But something about Gabriel stands apart. While other children memorize rules, he dissects them. While others practice arithmetic, he questions why numbers behave the way they do. Mathematics doesn't intimidate him, it invites him. By the time most students are still learning the basics, Gabriel is working through complex problems that would stump older pupils. He finds patterns in places others overlook. He devours ideas from physics, from astronomy, from the very mechanics that govern the heavens. It is as if the world is speaking to him in equations, and he is learning the language fluently. Guided by teachers who themselves stand at the crossroads of Europe's growing scientific world, mentors connected to the great Bernoulli family and the rapidly rising Euler, Kramer begins to sharpen his mind in ways that astonish even seasoned scholars. They see in him something rare, not just intelligence, but independence, a willingness to question, to probe, to understand deeply rather than accept passively. Before long, Gabriel starts producing small papers, early sparks of insight that circulate quietly among Geneva's intellectual circles. Each one carries the same signature, clarity, precision, and a startling maturity. The city's scholars begin to whisper that this young man, this quiet, unassuming student, may well be destined for greatness. And somewhere during these formative years, amidst the lectures, the late night study sessions, and the constant hum of ideas, a realization crystallizes within him. Mathematics is not simply a discipline to master. It is not a school subject, a series of tests, or a future profession. To Gabriel Kramer, mathematics becomes something far deeper. It becomes a lens, a way to understand nature, motion, logic, and truth itself. In that moment, a mathematician is born, not by title, but by identity, and the trajectory of his life is set forever. As Gabriel Kramer grows into adulthood, the quiet brilliance he showed as a child begins to radiate far beyond the classrooms of Geneva. His professors, impressed, astonished, sometimes even humbled, realize they are not merely teaching a student, 
They are witnessing the emergence of a thinker who will soon stand among them. And Geneva, a city that cherishes its intellectual traditions, does not wait long to harness his talent. Kramer is invited into the Academy of Geneva, first in supporting roles, guiding discussions, assisting lectures, offering his insight where most scholars his age would still be fumbling with fundamentals. But Kramer, he is different. His explanations are razor sharp, his logic airtight. His calm mastery of complex ideas quickly becomes impossible to ignore. Students begin to gravitate toward him. Senior scholars start relying on him. And in a remarkably short time, Gabriel Kramer is entrusted with something extraordinary. A professorship. Not by luck. Not by favour. But because his mind has already outpaced the expectations of those around him. As a full professor of mathematics, he now stands at the helm of Geneva's intellectual life, teaching geometry with elegance, algebra with precision, philosophy with depth, and astronomy with a clarity that draws connections few have ever considered. His lectures are orderly, structured, and deeply rational. He is the embodiment of the Enlightenment, a man for whom knowledge must not only be learned, but beautifully understood. But Kramer's influence does not stop at the borders of Geneva. His letters begin to traverse Europe, carrying his ideas into the hands of the era's greatest mathematicians. He writes to Leonhard Euler, already a prodigy on the rise. He exchanges insights with Jean Bernoulli, the giants of calculus and mechanics. He corresponds with the French mathematician Pierre Raymond de Montmore, delving into probability and analytic methods. These are not casual letters. These are dialogues, intense, precise, and mutually transformative. Through them, Kramer steps into the very center of Europe's mathematical network. His thinking sharpens, his reputation grows, and slowly, steadily, his voice becomes one of the most respected in the scientific world. Yet for all this recognition, Kramer remains remarkably humble. He cares little for fame, titles or public praise. His drive comes from something internal, an almost obsessive curiosity, an insistence on clarity, a desire to uncover the hidden structures that govern the world. To him, mathematics is not a ladder to status. It is a lifelong conversation with truth. And then, in the midst of this period of explosive intellectual growth, something shifts. Kramer begins to publish. Small works at first, elegant papers that reveal his mastery. But soon, his ideas start gaining traction across Europe. Mathematicians read him, cite him, debate him, discuss him. His name enters the scholarly bloodstream of the Enlightenment. Kramer is rising, not in fame, but in influence, quietly shaping the foundations of algebra, geometry, and scientific thought. And though he cannot know it yet, he is standing on the threshold of a breakthrough so profound, so enduring, that it will carry his name into every classroom, every textbook, and every engineering calculation for centuries to come. The moment that will define his legacy is now drawing near. By the mid-18th century, Mathematics is undergoing a quiet revolution. Calculus has been born, geometry is expanding, and Europe's brightest minds are racing to uncover the hidden order of the universe. Yet one problem remains stubbornly unsolved, a problem so fundamental that today we encounter it everywhere from physics equations to computer simulations. How do you solve a system of linear equations? Not just one or two, but any system of any size with any number of variables. In the 1700s, this problem was a tangle of confusion. Mathematicians had bits and pieces, methods, tricks, isolated insights, but no general rule. Determinants existed, yes, but they were scattered ideas, lacking order, lacking notation, lacking a unified structure. It was as though everyone had fragments of a map, but no one had drawn the whole picture. And this is where Gabriel Kramer steps in. 
Working quietly in Geneva, far from the bustling academies of Paris or Berlin, Kramer takes on the chaos head on. He studies linear systems with relentless focus, searching for a universal pattern, a way to solve them not just sometimes, but always. And then, in one elegant stroke of insight, he finds it. He publishes a general rule, a method that uses determinants to solve any linear system with the same precision and simplicity. A rule that reduces complexity into a crisp, mechanical procedure. A rule that makes the disorder finally intelligible. We now call it Kramer's Rule. And though the name may seem modest, the impact is anything but. With this single idea, Kramer helps lay the groundwork for what would become modern linear algebra. He gives mathematicians a systematic tool, a compass to navigate one of the most fundamental structures in mathematics. But this is only the beginning. In 1750, Kramer publishes what many consider his masterpiece, Introduction à l'analyse des lignes courbes algébriques, a monumental treatise on algebraic curves, geometry, and the deep relationships between equations and shapes. Within its pages lies a mystery that would puzzle geometers for centuries, what we now call Kramer's paradox, the surprising fact that two algebraic curves can intersect far more times than intuition suggests. The book is dense, ambitious, and decades ahead of its time. It is the work of a mind that refuses to take mathematics at face value, a mind that wants to understand not just how equations behave, but why. And still, Kramer's curiosity stretches further. He turns his attention to the heavens, applying his mathematical sharpness to the movements of planets and the mechanics of celestial bodies. With calculations that echo Newton and anticipate Laplace, Kramer contributes to the growing field of celestial mechanics, predicting orbital paths, mapping motions, exploring the geometry of the cosmos. In probability theory, he refines earlier ideas of Bernoulli, helping to clarify the mathematical foundations of chance and risk. His work spreads quietly across Europe, reaching Paris, Basel, Berlin. And soon, the giants begin to notice. Euler builds on his insights, Lagrange references his methods. Laplace extends ideas that Kramer first articulated. His work becomes part of the very scaffolding of 18th and 19th century mathematics. Not loudly, not with fanfare, but with the steady influence of ideas too powerful to ignore. By now, Gabriel Kramer has reached a peak, an intellectual summit carved through decades of precision, discipline and brilliance. His name carries weight in the mathematical community. His publications are studied, cited, revered. He stands at the height of his powers, poised to continue shaping the future of mathematics. But as his ideas ascend, his health begins to fail, and the world is about to lose a mind that has only just begun to reveal its full potential. A breakthrough has defined his legacy, and a tragedy is about to define his fate. As Gabriel Kramer enters the final stretch of his life, he continues his lectures at the Academy of Geneva, shaping young minds with clarity that feels almost prophetic. His home becomes a quiet hub of scholarly activity. Students come seeking guidance, colleagues come seeking insight, and still, Kramer gives everything he has, every scrap of knowledge, every refined idea, every spark of curiosity. But beneath that calm surface, his health is beginning to unravel. Perhaps it is the pace at which he works, perhaps the strain of constant intellectual labour, perhaps simply fate. Yet he presses on, refusing to let physical decline interrupt the pursuit of understanding. Then, in early January of 1752, the inevitable arrives. On the fourth of that month, Gabriel Kramer dies unexpectedly at the age of just 47. A brilliant mind, extinguished far too soon. Geneva is shaken, for those who knew him, for those who studied beside him, for those who learned under him, the loss feels immeasurable. The academy mourns a professor whose clarity shaped generations, 
Students mourn a mentor whose guidance changed the way they saw the world. Colleagues mourn a visionary whose ideas seem to grow sharper with every passing year. Word spreads quickly across Europe, and almost immediately, the tributes begin. Euler speaks of his respect for Kramer's precision. Members of the Bernoulli family acknowledge the depth of his insight. Scientific journals publish eulogies, reflecting on the magnitude of his work, on algebraic curves, determinants, geometry, probability, astronomy. His intellectual fingerprints, it becomes clear, are everywhere. Modern engineering relies on systems of equations to model forces, circuits and stability and Kramer's rule offers a foundational method for solving them. Physics uses linear algebra to describe quantum states, transformations, and symmetries. Again, rooted in ideas Kramer helped shape. Computer science, from algorithms to machine learning, depends on matrix operations and determinants, concepts he helped formalize long before anyone imagined a digital world. Everywhere equations exist, Kramer's fingerprints remain. And yet, most students who solve their first system of linear equations know the rule, but not the man. He may have lived a short life, but every time a system of equations is solved, a small part of Gabriel Kramer lives again. 